Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the basic structure of the animal, plant and bacterial cell and make a few comparisons between them. Now this video is aimed really at, again, sort of key stage 3, key stage 4 level. When you do it at A level or IB, especially in biology or human biology, you go into much more significant depth and there's a, a whole host of particular features or organelles, parts of these cells, that you only learn about at an advanced level. But we're just going to put in some, some basics, just so you've got an idea of what the cells look like and what they typically contain. So let's start with the animal one first. So what we're going to do is we'll draw each part in and then I'll explain what they are. So we've got an outer part first of all here. So we can straight away go to label that because that outer part that I've just drawn here is what's called the cell membrane. Cell membrane. Now the cell membrane holds the cell together but more than that it controls what comes in and controls what goes out of the cell. Which is vital when we think about homeostasis or maintaining a constant internal environment. It's important that anything that needs to go out of the cell does, anything that must come into the cell does. And it's a cell membrane that will coordinate that. In another video I've talked a bit more in detail about the, the structure of that cell membrane. So we've put the membrane in place. Now let's put in this large structure here. We'll colour this in. Now that large structure there that I've just drawn is what we call the nucleus. It's like the powerhouse of the cell, if you like. It controls the cell's metabolic activities. Now it contains DNA in the form of chromosomes. So we have chromosomes within that nucleus and you'll see that I've drawn this little membrane around the nucleus with little gaps in is because the membrane has what are called nuclear pores or little holes in. But as a structure, that is the nucleus that controls that cell. So then what we have ultimately here, and we'll just colour this all in. I'm not sure why I've picked green, but still. This whole region here. Now that whole region there that I've just shaded in green is called cytoplasm. Now the cytoplasm is a gel-like substance and it's where most of the cell's chemical reactions happen. So you can get kind of gives that cell really some shape, but it's where the reactions take place. And then we can draw lots of different things within that cytoplasm. So we'll use red here, we'll put in a few red dots. I'm just putting in the basics, the few basic structures that at key stage three and four you need to be aware of. So these red dots, and we'll label that in red, these are ribosomes. And ribosomes are where proteins are made or synthesized. So it's the site of protein synthesis. Now, along with those, I'm gonna draw a few of these, and it's not by any means the best or the clearest picture. But I'll label these with a Turn it colour and I'll just colour in the centre just to distinguish them from the other parts. Those bits that I've just labelled there, and I'll label these in blue, they are called mitochondria. So mitochondria. Now the mitochondria are where most of the reactions involved in respiration take place. So aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria. 
Now, respiration is the process that provides energy for all the other cell processes. And there's certain cells that have loads of mitochondria because they would require lots of energy. So we're thinking muscle cells, which need energy to contract for movement, and liver cells, which carry out lots of energy-demanding metabolic reactions. So certain cells like liver and muscle have lots of these mitochondria. And that is these mitochondria where you get energy produced. So here we've just outlined a few of the basic animal cell structures. Now let's think about the plant cell. So let's draw a very basic plant cell here. So what I've drawn around the outside, and we'll, we'll colour this in to use a little bit of colour just to distinguish it from the other parts. No, my diagrams aren't the best, but still. So this part that I've just coloured in here, this is a cell wall. Now this is something that very Importantly, the animal cell does not have. So the bacteria has a bacteria, sorry, the plant has a cell wall, and it's made of something called cellulose. So it's a cellulose cell wall. And that's important because the cell wall in a bacteria, because bacteria cells do have a cell wall, that's made of something called peptidoglycan. So it's a slightly different structure than this one here. So we have the cell wall. And this is going to support the cell. We also, this black line that I've drawn on the inside here, that is our cell membrane. So there's still a cell membrane in this plant cell. We'll put in a, a nucleus here. Let's do that as a big black dot. In fact, we'll do a joint label there. Because I've already labelled the nucleus on the animal cell. So there's our, our nucleus. Now we actually have a region that looks a bit like this. Here, a bit unusual. Can be found in animal cells, but typically it's a, a plant cell feature. So this bit that I've just coloured in blue here, this is known as a vacuole. Now, a vacuole is quite a large structure and it contains what's called cell sap. That's SAP. It's a sort of a weak solution, if you like, of sugar and salt. And the plant is going to make use of those sugar and salts for processes that it needs to conduct, essentially. So it's just a large structure containing the cell sap, and that sap is made of sugar and salts that the cell could use to respire, for example. Now, we do still have, and I'll colour it in green, as I did bef before, this region around the outside here. And that is, once again, and I'll use the same label, that is cytoplasm. So around them right twice, that's cytoplasm, so cytoplasm in both of the cells. But you'll notice there's something... In fact, let's put in a few ribosomes, because the, there are ribosomes too. I won't label these a second time, but there are ribosomes. And again, in fact, there are... these mitochondria which the animal cell has but there's also unique to the plant cell something else inside and it's these dark green structures that I'm just going to put a few of them in so I'll draw them in and then I'll explain what they are We've got these big 
dark green structures and those dark green structures if I I'll write it up here they are called chloroplasts now chloroplasts are where photosynthesis occurs photosynthesis is the process by which plants obtain their, their food or their sugar source if you like these chloroplasts are organelles, little small parts of the plant cell, that contain a pigment called chlorophyll. And that chlorophyll traps sunlight for use in photosynthesis. Now this is going a little bit more advanced. Um, key stage 3 wouldn't require this, but key stage 4 do. You don't just have chlorophyll as, as the pigment that traps sunlight. There's actually um, different types of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and there are present what are called accessory pigments, other pigments that can trap um, different wavelengths of light. But we've got there our chloroplasts, structures in the plant cell that are designed to trap sunlight for photosynthesis. So we can see straight away that there are some differences between this animal and plant cell. Three key things to note that the plant cell has that the animal cell doesn't. Chloroplast is one, cell wall is two, and the vacuole would make three. So let's finally finish off this video by thinking about a bacterial cell, because a bacterial cell looks completely different to these two. Now, to make a little bit of room, I'm just going to shrink the screen just slightly here. And let's draw our bacterial cell. So what I've just drawn in here, let's talk about this structure first of all, in fact we'll, we'll colour it in red just to distinguish it again from the other two drawings. I did refer when I was talking about the plant cell to a cell wall and this bacterial cell does have a cell wall, in fact it's here, this outer part is a cell wall, but it's made of what's called peptidoglycan. So it's a different structure than the plant cell because that has a cell wall made of cellulose. So we have a cell wall on the outside, and this red part here is an outer, I'll label it in red, a capsule, a protective outer capsule. We again have on the inside, so I've just put that arrow, a cell membrane, and the cell membrane, like I said before, controls what comes in and out. We have inside, and I won't, I won't shape the whole thing in, but this region here that I'm just shading in, that is once again a uh, cytoplasm. So we'll we'll label that. We have cytoplasm there. Now bacteria don't have chloroplasts. That's one thing to, to make a point of. In fact, I'll put a big red X by that at the top. So when, because I've coloured the capsule in red, it might help you to remember that bacteria don't have the chloroplasts, nor do they have these mitochondria. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about why, but it's just for the purpose of this to remember that those are two structures that bacteria typically don't have. And they don't have a true nucleus. They don't have a nucleus with DNA in that's surrounded by a membrane. Instead, they have loose strands of DNA. So I'll colour these in blue. They have just loose strands of DNA and typically a ring of DNA, a circular ring of DNA called a plasmid. So this genetic information, this plasmid ring of DNA is just loose within the cytoplasm. It's not contained within a nucleus or within any kind of membrane bound sac. Now, just for the purpose of completion, at key stage three you wouldn't need these. Before you do, there are on the outside little 
small extensions that look a bit like this and I'll colour in purple here. These and I'll shrink this down again just so I can just so I can put the name of this in place. These that I've just labelled in purple here, each one is called a pili. Or well collectively they're called pili. Each one is called a pillus, P I W L U S. So these purple little things are called pili. And they're designed to communicate with other cells, so other bacterial cells. Now what I haven't drawn in is this. It's not the best drawing or sketch by any means. But this final part that I'm going to label is quite unique to the bacteria. It's called the flagellum. It's a tail and it corkscrews to allow movement of this bacteria. So this flagella tail allows it to move through a corkscrew motion. So there we just have the basic structure and function of the animal, plant and bacterial cell. In Key Stage 5 at A level and IB you do it in much greater depth. But this video is sufficient for Key Stage 3 and certainly for Key Stage 4. Okay, I hope all that helps.